Hello, this is Deanna with Vintage Veneers Decor, and today I'm going to show you how to apply a stencil to a piece of furniture using a very simple technique that produces a nice, clean, crisp image. If you've watched any of my videos recently, you'll know that I created a faux grain sack fabric motif on this small table uh, using chalk paint and glaze. And today I'm going to add this French themed stencil on top to complete the look. The materials that you will need to do this stencil um, are the stencil itself, of course, uh, chalk paint. In this case, I'm using Authentico Vintage Chalk in Nocturnal. You're going to need a chalk paint brush that has a flat top or a stenciling brush, but the key in this case is it has, must have a flat, not rounded top. You're going to want some painter's tape to uh, put your stencil in place and, and ensure it does not move. Some sort of measuring tape or stick to make sure that your stencil is, is centered correctly on your, on your furniture piece. And you're going to need a paper towel that's folded in four as a blotter. So typically stencils uh, that are, uh, when they're put on the film, they usually are centered on that film. And so I've already put this stencil on the table in order to save some time. But usually if you have a, a rectangular or square stencil, you can use the ends uh, as a guide to ensure that, that the stencil is uh, centered on your piece. Once you uh, get the stencil in the right place, you're going to want to tape it down with your uh, painter's tape. You may have seen uh, or heard in other uh, videos that you need to put an adhesive on the back of your stencil. You certainly can do that, but the technique that I'm going to show you today does not require you to do that. Uh, and in fact, it, as long as you put a piece of tape in a couple areas just to make sure that the stencil doesn't move, you should be able to do the stencil, uh, stenciling correctly and still get a nice clean image without any sort of uh, adhesive on the back of the stencil. Um, so as I mentioned, the key to this is making sure that you use a flat paintbrush. And the other key to this method is offloading of paint. So what you want to do when you put your stencil brush into your paint, you want to just get the tips of it saturated. You don't want to get the entire length of the bristle saturated, just the very tips. And then the most important part of this, next to the fact that you're using a flat brush, is to blot on your paper towel and offload almost all of the paint that you have put on it. So what you're looking to do is really kind of create a dry brush because that is how you're going to control the paint so that it does not bleed underneath uh, the openings of the stencil. So you can see it's not quite as shiny wet as it was when we first uh, dipped it in our paint. So the key to ensuring that you do not have bleed is doing an up and down uh, stroke where you're literally just tapping over the image. You want to hold your hand very close to the image where you're stenciling and you just want to tap up and down, straight up and down. If you do it on an angle, that is where you're going to be pushing paint under the stencil, so you don't want to do that. And don't worry if you think there's not enough paint because you can always go back if you don't have a solid look and if you want that solid look and you could always go back and add another layer of the paint. So I'm going to go ahead and let you watch me stencil these various areas uh, of the open uh, stencil and how uh, this is going to proceed to create a nice, clean image. So when you run out of paint or you feel like it's not uh, 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 
getting as dark as you'd like, you could just go right back into uh, your blotter and pick up some additional paint. You'll notice that as you are doing the stenciling, as the paint is getting lighter and lighter, you will need to push down harder and harder. You just want to be careful that you're not pushing down so hard that the bristles are splitting because that again is where you're going to get into the situation where the bristles and the paint are getting under uh, the openings in the stencil. So again, if you're starting to run out of paint, just go back either to the blotter or back to your original source. Just make sure you offload any of that fresh paint onto your paper towel blotter. So as I do this, I often like to go in little circles. Uh, that seems to help saturate the area a little better uh, and fill in any of the little spots that don't get hit by paint the first pass. Okay, so you'll see here with this stencil that there's a couple areas that are a little lighter, right here particularly. If you, again, think it needs more paint, you just, just continue to go over it with your almost dry brush until it's filled in to uh, what you want. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and lift this very carefully so as not to damage the uh, original finish on the table. I'll peel off my painter's tape. And I'm going to put this aside. There you go. You can see. Beautiful stencil. Thanks for watching.